Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I just want to quickly show you how we can use retrofit in combination with coroutines. And as you can see, I already created a very basic retrofit setup here. I will use this JSON placeholder URL, which is just an open API you can try around with. And I will get some example comments from that side. So I created that my API interface that gets the comments from this website with this get comments function and I created a data class for for a comment and that's basically it. Don't forget to include the internet permission. But yeah, normally if we do a retrofit request, we did it like this. So we called our API, then the function of that API that gets your data and called NQ afterwards. That NQ function will start that request in a separate thread and then use that callback that we pass here afterwards to notify us when the response is complete or when the response failed. And if the response was successful, then I just print out all the comments that are included in that response. So let's quickly try that out. So you can see in my logcat, there you go here, are all the comments, it's working perfectly fine. But we start a whole nother thread with this in queue function. And as you probably already know, that is not very efficient because we have coroutines which are way more efficient. So it would be much smarter to not start a whole nother thread for that request and instead execute that request inside of a coroutine. So let's actually do that and remove that block of code here and instead start a coroutine in global scope, global scope .launch and start it in dispatches.io of course because that is an IO operation and here we just write val comments which is the result of that request and set it equal to api.getcomments.await that's it then we can just use the exact same for loop afterwards for each comment in comments and then just log the result so if we now run our app again and take a look in Logcat, you see it is working exactly the same as before. It, it's printing out our comments here. And that is of course much, much simpler and much cleaner code than what we had before. And maybe you're asking yourself, what if we want, still want to get the response object of that retrofit request? Because now that array function gives us directly the list of comments, but in case an error occurs at our request, then we cannot really handle it. And that is actually also very easy to solve. We, instead of array, we just call await response. And then our comments is not a list of comments anymore. Instead, it's a response of list of comments. So we could call this response in this case. Then we could check if that response was successful. And in that case, execute that for loop with our response, response dot body. And here, of course, assume that this is not null. So that is one way of using retrofit with coroutines. Another way, which I actually prefer, is that we just go into our API class and in our interface and make these functions suspend functions. And also make sure to not return a call object in that case, because now we can directly return a response object. And if we now go back into our main activity, you can see that we cannot use await response anymore and we don't need to use it anymore because we can directly call api.getComments and because that is a suspend function, it will only continue afterwards if the comments are actually retrieved from the API. So yeah, I think you get why you should always use retrofit in combination with coroutines. On the one hand, it's much less code and on the other hand, it's just much more efficient to start a coroutine than to start a whole new thread for each request you make. So yeah, if this video helped you to understand how to actually use coroutines in a real network call example, then please let me know in the comments. And also if there's anything I can improve on, please leave me some feedback below. That would be really helpful for me. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.